Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Lucha Underground Luchador Spotlight. On our last episode, we talked about the third member of the family, Killshot. And now today, we're going to talk about the guy that he had the most beef with in Season 1, that being King Cuerno. A uh, personal favorite of mine. I absolutely love King Cuerno in the ring, psychological, just the character work that he does, everything. John, what do you think about Cuerno kind of overall? Well, you know he grew on me exponentially as the season progressed. I mean, you were on the train right away. Like, he just appealed to you instantly. Me, I never hated him. I want to make that explicitly clear because I don't know if there's ever been any ambiguity about that. I always liked him, but the like progressed to more of like a love as the season progressed. I think he has an amazing look. I agree with you 110% on the psychology. Honestly, next to Pentagon, and, and I would even uh, consider a debate to be fair if people were to have it, I think King Cuerno is one of the best characters you know, in Lucha Underground right now, maybe even in all of pro wrestling, because I love the package and I love the execution. King Cuerno is fantastic. Yeah, I'm glad that we're doing this too, because I something that I've really been wanting to say for a really long time that I'm just now finally deciding to actually – you know, come out and say, and the main reason behind that is because people probably just already knew, but to me, King Cuerno is everything that Leo Kruger should have been. Yes. Oh my God. Yes, absolutely. Completely agree. He's got that dark brooding feel, but at the end of the day, the number one thing that you need to know about him is that he is a hunter. Yes. And he's so committed to it. You know, it's like with Leo Kruger and I love the gimmick it's like he was a hunter, but he also had that mentally unbalanced thing going. I think what makes King Cuerno superior is really just to your point. He's purely a hunter, and part of being a hunter is having that cerebral edge. You could argue that Kruger had it, but I think Cuerno has it on a more intellectual, kind of psychological level. And I, I just love watching him, you know, skulk around a ring or watch prey from afar. Like, just all the mannerisms that come with King Cuerno are a delight to watch. It's just amazing. And I'm really glad you made that parallel. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that what it really comes down to is that with Cuerno, he's not quite as concerned with playing mind games as much as he's concerned with just being a good hunter. Because sometimes somebody knowing that they're being hunted is enough to get inside their head and throw them off. Exactly. I mean, the perfect illustration, I don't want to jump the gun here, Ashton, so forgive me, but the perfect illustration of Cuerno, I think, being a great hunter, you look at the feud he had with Johnny Mundo. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm watching this guy do all of this aerial stuff and all these high fly maneuvers because he was still a Technico at the time. So what do I do? I pick apart the leg. See, it's those little things that even talking to you now are really illuminated to me. And it's like, wow, this guy is just so good because he doesn't just attack. Any heel, or in this case, in Lucha Underground, any Rudo could attack. Cuerno attacks with a kind of finesse and a kind of purpose that I think makes him distinct from other Rudos. I I just really love him. Yeah, so. so let's talk briefly about his season one. You already touched on the Mundo feud, but that was more in the middle of the season. His yes. early season feud was with Drago, and he specifically came into the temple against Drago. It was his first match, and it was his first match, and he lost his debut match, which isn't a very common thing that you, that you see often. Right. Yeah, he, he lost it. But I mean, he, he was really quick, you know, to just say like, this isn't over. It seemed like one of those quick wins, not really one of those necessarily definitive types like, oh, I dominated this guy. Yeah. Uh, and I remember us even talking about it when we originally reviewed the episode where he had his debut, how much I loved him, because that entire match, any kind of offense that Drago got felt like Cuerno was letting him get it. Exactly. Exactly. All part of that stalking, that analyzing kind of aspect of Cuerno. Like, I'm going to let this guy get his offense on me so I can understand what makes him tick, what he's about. And, yeah, I, I really like that. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So as far as the Drago feud goes, obviously he did lose that first match, but then they had some really crazy matches after that. Who would you say came out of that feud the victor? I would say uh, definitely King Cuerno. I mean, I mean, he lost... Uh, you know, that first match, sure, but he won the second match, and I believe he won the uh, the last man standing match that those two guys had. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say Cuerno came out on the better end of his feud with Drago as the winner. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. I mean, I think my only thing is he won the last man standing match in a very sort of cheap way. Right, right. So I don't know if I would necessarily say that he definitively won that feud, but 
he definitely came out of that feud looking strong, which is a theme that we see across pretty much all of Lucha Underground, where no matter who wins a feud, they never really make anybody look stupid or weak or foolish. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. You're just, again, with every conversation we have about every performer, you just remind me why I love Lucha Underground. It's just things like that, and, and they certainly achieve that with this feud. But, yeah, I'd say Cuerno, because he won the definitive bout, the tiebreaker, if you will, uh, yeah, he, he definitely came out stronger for me for that reason alone. So Yeah. Uh, so after that, though, we did, as you pointed out with the Johnny Mundo thing, he started targeting Johnny Mundo. We never really got a thorough explanation on why, but I think that, that maybe Cueto had something to do with it because we did see at one point uh, they were talking in Cueto's office. It was Cueto and Cuerno. And Cuerno said something about hanging Johnny Mundo's head up on his wall. Yeah, so I have to agree with you. I think Cueto kind of ordered that quote unquote hit, if you want to call it that. But also, if we if we bring it back to the Hunter gimmick, uh, I think it's just going after, again, more dangerous game. It's like, OK, I'm done with Drago. Now let me go to somebody that's really been kind of the epicenter of Lucha Underground. That's really got Lucha Underground buzzing about him, Johnny Mundo, because a hunter always likes to test themselves. Ain't more dangerous game than one of the top guys in the company. So, yeah, I think it really worked out quite uh, brilliantly. Yeah, absolutely. So after the the Mundo feud, which I will say produced, in my opinion, probably the most underrated match from Lucha Underground Season 1, their cage match that they had together. Their cage match was phenomenal. I, and, and you absolutely loved it, which was amazing to see because it had my all-time guy, Johnny Mundo, and a guy that you were just, like, really embracing in King Cuerno. I wasn't there at the time. But then watching it again when I had really embraced both guys, it really is a work of art because it really isn't like most cage matches you see. You know, I, I like the pacing of it. Love the finish, how definitive it was. Just, it, it really checked off all the right boxes for me, this cage yeah. match did. Yeah, and then you said something about the finish, and to me, that's a really big part of what made it so good was just how satisfying the finish was. Although, we are talking about King Cuerno, and he came out of that match on the losing end. He did. Yeah, it, it, was, it was very interesting to see that he lost that match, keeping up Johnny Mundo's momentum, but it left King Cuerno in kind of an interesting place, you know, coming off of a loss in a big feud like this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, so let's move on. His next feud, if you want to call it a feud, which... I mean, I think it is, considering we just got done talking about him on uh, Saturday. He he went into a bit of a program with Killshot, and I, the only real complaint I have about this is it never really got fleshed out as far as why these guys are feuding. Although, realistically, I don't necessarily know if it needed to, because we can just assume that they were fighting to see who the better hunter was. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that was kind of implied, right? When you see Killshot kind of duplicating... King Cuerno's mannerisms, because there was one segment, I think it was in the triple threat between Cuerno, Cage, and Hernandez. I think that's the match that it was. It could have been another matchup. But you see Killshot perched up where King Cuerno usually is, and he's analyzing him. So it's like, okay, this guy's muscling in on my turf. Uh, so yeah, I agree with you. I would have enjoyed more exposition. I would have enjoyed more interaction between these guys leading up to a matchup. But um, I, I, th I think it was simple enough and, and delivered enough for what it was. Yeah, absolutely. So then to close out the season, he obviously ended up in the Gift of the Gods championship race with the Aztec Medallions. He ended up being in the finals and in the, the big seven-way match at Ultima Lucha Part 2. And he did end up being in sort of the, the three-man, I don't know what you want to call it, kind of menagerie that ended up closing the match out. Although, unfortunately, he did end up getting thrown out of the ring by Phoenix before Phoenix ended up getting the winning pin on Jack Evans. Exactly. So a losing experience for King Cuerno, adult Malucha. Uh, even though he but, didn't get pinned. Even though he didn't get pinned. See, yes. that, honestly, that's part of why I was hoping that that seven way match would be elimination style. Yeah, you and me both, because I thought like it would give like everybody a lot more shine. But I think Lucha Underground really thrives on the chaos and it, probably, again, their way of protecting King Cuerno. And of course, as you and I would see Ashton in the in the quote-unquote what I'll call the credit sequence, the ending few minutes, King Cuerno's going to try and make his own luck now because now he's in pursuit of Phoenix. So, yeah, very interesting times for King Cuerno. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's a great way to kind of end off our Season 1 discussion because immediately now you mentioned Phoenix. We need to talk about Season 2 and what we think Cuerno's going to do, what we want Cuerno to do, that kind of stuff. 
And I think that the most obvious thing to start out with is he's obviously going to be going after the Gift of the Gods championship from Phoenix, right? Yes, he is going to be pursuing that Gift of the Gods championship because we know whoever has that has a guaranteed, you know, world title match so long as they uh, cash it in like like a week before so that uh, that has a week to be promoted. So, yeah, big stakes there. That's definitely going to be probably how his season begins, maybe even go towards the middle of the season. I don't know how long they're going to drag this out. That's the thing because I think Phoenix and Cuerno could have an amazing program together. But uh, what do you think about the prospect of this whole feud, Ashton? I am looking forward to it. I think that... Uh, Just as far as Phoenix goes in general, he's one of those guys that can put on entertaining matches with pretty much anyone. And I think that King Cuerno is the same way for completely different reasons. With Phoenix, he can put on an entertaining match because he's just entertaining in general. He likes to flip around. He's very showboaty, very flashy, lots of of, of sizzle to his stake. Uh, whereas Cuerno, I think he can put on an entertaining match with anyone because he knows how to get over. He knows how to get anyone that he's working with over and he knows how to give the crowd what they want or deprive from them what they want and get heat. And you know what the best qualities about Phoenix is, and I do want to keep the focus on Cuerno, don't get me wrong, and I'll get to that in a second. He's so good in my mind at being vulnerable and his feud with No Muertes really showed me that. And I think Cuerno is really going to be able to capitalize on that. But let me just say, too, because you said, like, we're going to talk about what we think he's going to do and what we want him to do. The biggest compliment I can give, well, really more generally, Lucha Underground, King Cuerno is a guy that this season, in all honesty, if I'm being blunt, it should be the world title for the taking for King Cuerno. But the roster is just so good. I don't even have him winning the world title this season, which I almost feel like should be a travesty. Well, and honestly, John, I don't even have him. I don't necessarily think he's even going to get a world title shot this season right with how just how much you know top level talent there is on this roster i mean you look at the guys like mundo and cage and i I mean we even had a great storyline playing out for kill shot in the mac and and i mean phoenix himself and then of course you've got to look at drago and and guys like pentagon and puma of course you know he's going to get his return match there's just too much going on at the top of the card for uh, a psychological mastermind like Cuerno to really fit in, and especially when, at the moment at least, we've got a Rudo champ. It just doesn't make sense. Exactly, and here's the thing too, you know, and it's just the nature of the wrestling business. You never know what talent's going to walk through the door, what kind of influx you're going to experience. But the thing about that is, and I will say this, I think King Cuerno's good enough that he can still stand ahead of the pack. I, I just think that's how good his packaging and his execution is. I don't think that is a talent that ever has to worry about getting lost in the shuffle. Could be my famous last words, but I highly doubt it. But I do agree with your overall assessment. We've got a Rudo champ. We've got a Rudo landscape. It's not Cuerno's time right now. Right. But let me tell you something. The moment that that belt goes back to a Technico, Cuerno's the next Rudo. I want to see hold it. And that says a lot, given that Mundo is still a Rudo right now. And yeah. I'd still opt for King Cuerno, if I'm being honest. That wow. guy is so freaking good. Yeah. Like... Let him run with it. Because, again, I've already made my – of course, obviously, I'd explode for a Mundo World title win. But I like what he's doing, working with these big guys and then working with these other guys, maybe kind of establishing them a little bit. With Cuerno, no, nah, man, I want to see it. I want to see him, you know, claim the ultimate prize. This way the game starts coming to him to hunt rather than him having to pursue them. That's what I think the appeal of him winning the world title is. But we can't do that right now. But what can we do? We've got the feud with Phoenix. That's already established. Um, you know what my end game was in the cage video and I'm standing by it. I would love to see cage Cuerno at Ultima Lucha. Yeah. Um, you know, like I, I know there was a big debate and I appreciated the debate a little bit in the, uh, in the comments about whether cage could be Technico or Rudo or how that match could work with what alignments this and that. I mean, the stare downs they had and the teases they made, I think it would be a great payoff for both guys. Plus, and here's another compliment to Cuerno. Whether he wins or loses, this guy is good enough to have his own one-on-one match at Ultima Lucha. Uh, I appreciated him being in Gift of the Gods, but you're talking seven people there. He's good enough where he can have the attention on him in a one-on-one match, and he could carry that thing. And I, of course, believe the same of Cage. So you get those two one-on-one. Uh, what happens in between? That's that's where I'm questioning it a bit. I mean, maybe King Cuerno revisits Puma a little bit, because I, I feel like they interacted a little bit short, but I, I, I could still stand to see them do it some more. You know, I don't know, like, how far do we want the fall of Prince Puma to go? Because I've kind of alluded to that. Maybe King Cuerno gets in that mix. Yeah. Um, 
But but I, I think what I take solace in is regardless of what you give a guy like Cuerno, I think he can pull it off. You know, within reason, obviously, but Lucha Underground has shown that it has plenty of reason to spare. So to me, I think whatever they give Cuerno, he'll hit it out of the park. And I'm really hoping season three, though. I'm obviously I'm already thinking ahead. He gets in that main of that level tier, and I would actually kind of like the groundwork for that to be laid in season two. Like get him to be that definitive fixture because he's so good. So. Yeah, I think one guy that I can really think of that I know we already did talk about, and I don't think we mentioned Cuerno in our commentary for him, but a guy that I would really want to see Cuerno have a program with this season is Son of Havoc. Oh my goodness, I love the sound of that already. Yeah. Because I mean Son of Havoc even though Son of Havoc doesn't necessarily have sort of like that am- animal theme that you would normally expect for somebody for Cuerno to go after, uh, I just think the story that would be able to get told between the two of them, maybe Cuerno is going after somebody else and Son of Havoc playing the hero role comes out and saves that person. I mean Johnny Mundo didn't have any kind of animal gimmick when Cuerno targeted him. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a part of his character. Um, I I just want, because here's the thing, John, the, the way that Havoc is able to get that, that sympathy from the crowd and that baby face reaction versus King Cuerno's ability to get heat. I think that that would be some of the most emotionally worthwhile to invest in matches of the year. Oh, Ashton, I completely agree with you. And, and here's the thing, and we were kind of touching on this earlier. No, Mundo didn't have an animal-related gimmick. But, I mean, two things. One, he was still a Technico, and he was very much over. And two, again, he was higher up on the card. I think Son of Havoc fits that same mold. Yeah. I, I think, look at, and I, I hate to... I hate to go there, but but let's go there for a second, just very briefly to, sh- to show again the parallels between real life and wrestling. I mean, Ash, I don't even have to cite any specific examples. You know the disgust and the disdain that people have when you see hunters like pose with dead animals on their Facebooks or on their social media after they killed them. Right. Now imagine the disdain for a King Cuerno when he's taking Son of Havoc, probably one of the most beloved people, and probably soon to be the most beloved at the rate he's going, people in Lucha Underground, and you see Cuerno just beating the bejesus out of him. I you know what just... I could even see happening? And I'm not saying I want this to happen, but I'm saying that if they wanted to go there to get the heat on Cuerno, I think that it could work. What if right. Cuerno unmasked Son of Havoc? See, and, and that would be crazy. I remember, and see, I, it's funny you say that, because I don't know if you remember this. Do you remember a conversation we had when we knew that King Cuerno was going to debut when we got that Hunter vibe, and I kind of had some ideas where the gimmick would go, but you thought I was going too far. I said I would have liked to have seen him collect masks and make that kind of yeah. a trophy room. Yeah, I uh, do remember that. And I, I do agree with you now. I've kind, of, I've kind of sobered up and just thought, okay, that, that does make it a bit cheesy. That is a bit too far. But when you do it once in a while and you do it with somebody that matters, I think that's a very effective tool. So I like your idea. I think he should unmask Son of Havoc because especially when he's at the height of popularity, to be insulted like that yeah. by this just this malicious hunter, the heat, though. Yeah. And, like, that's the thing. It's not and, – and what makes it better, I think, from uh, – from Superfly's unmasking is, A, again, son of freaking Havoc, one of the most over guys there. And two, this isn't a Quato thing. This is just Cuerno wanting to break son of Havoc, which I think right. is just worse on so many levels. So, yes, 150%, yes, I endorse that. Awesome. I like that. I- I'm glad that we agreed on this one. So, yeah, I think it would make sense, too, if they had, because obviously early on in the season, Puma is going to get his rematch against Muertes. Maybe I know that we did talk about Son of Havoc getting a match against Muertes at some point in the season. Maybe he is Muertes' second opponent for the title. He loses, but then because he's kind of in that picture, Cuerno targets him. Maybe. Now, Ashton, here's my question, though, because you already know what my Ultima Lucha landscape was. Do you have, if we went as far as King Cuerno unmasking Havoc, Havoc getting his come up inside an Ultima Lucha in a one-on-one match against Cuerno? Like, what no, is your no, 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 no. I mean, that's a feud that I would start in, like, episode eight and finish in, like, episode 20. Okay, okay, fair enough. That's like a mid-season feud. I would say, as far as endgame goes, for Cuerno, uh, really, there's a lot you could do with him. I, I You could put him against... Any of the the animal themed guys, you could do Phoenix. Um, he's probably going to be the early early game thing. You could do Drago again. That's never going to be bad. 
You could do, uh, I don't know what direction they're going to go with Marty the Moth, but we will talk about him eventually. That would be an interesting feud. Uh, I don't know. There are a lot of different ways they could go with him. I honestly, for some reason, I keep on coming up with these uh, these guys that were in a tag team in season one. I want Cuerno versus Angelico. See, and like, I think that would be a great matchup. Now, you already know from the Johnny Mundo episode, That's I have Angelico. That's what you want. That's what you yeah, want on your exactly. Ultima Lucha, but I also didn't necessarily agree with you on that. I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I do like that idea as well, yeah. was what I was getting ready to say. Like, even right. though I have my own variation of Angelico's journey to Ultima Lucha too, I do yeah. like that. Uh you know, because hell, with how on Helico soars, maybe Cuerno just wants to clip his wings. I don't freaking know. You know, whatever motivation goes on in Cuerno's head. And I think you actually had a good line that you said earlier that kind of made a light bulb go off on my head. When you say that a guy, there's so much that he can do, that's all you need to know to know how good he is. Because you've thrown out Son of Havoc now. Uh, for for one program midseason, and now on Helico potentially for Ultima Lucha, and neither of those hit my ear the wrong way because right. everybody involved in that is so good. And the thing with King Cuerno, because he isn't confined to that animal role, which I'm actually grateful for because it it, it gives him more breadth of options. It gives him a wider spectrum. Uh, you know, it allows him versus on Helico to work. You just need a very simple motivation. And come on, it's Lucha Underground. They'd be able to do one in their sleep. So yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Absolutely. And, and I think one other name, just because when we finally do talk about Mil Muertes, I want to talk about him potentially turning Technico, which I, I definitely think is a possibility this season. I think Cuerno Muertes would be an amazing match. I, I would agree with that. Oh, my Obviously, God, yes. It would, be, it would be Rudo Cuerno versus Technico Muertes. Um, but it seemed like towards the end of the season, the crowd was really getting behind Muertes anyway. So uh, turning him full-time Technico wouldn't even be that much of a task. You just let him do his thing against bad guys instead of good guys. Yeah, you don't even... And see, that's the thing. Can I just say this, too? Because I've thought about your uh, deliberations about Muertes going Technico. To me, I agree with you. Don't even, like, don't even make a spectacle of it. You know what I mean? Right. Don't make him come out there and save another Technico, or don't make him have, it, have him give this speech. No, don't do anything. Go and about And you know what? That's usual. the thing, too, is you don't even necessarily need to make him full-blown Technico. You could just have him be... Like that badass tweener that kills everyone. Exactly. Exa oh, my God, dude. Are you can make Cuerno versus Muertes. To me, at this point, where both of those guys are right now. And you know uh, what? I would center that feud around Katrina, too. I would have Cuerno go after Katrina and force Muertes to defend her. There you go. Yeah. I Cause, mean, well, cause, yeah. And we could even play it off. He's, he's hunting Succubus. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, again, or to I me, guess, dude. Would it be, would it be Succubi? It, it, a succubi is the plural form, so succubus okay. is correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Crash course in mythology there for you guys. Um, yeah, we appreciate but, it, John. You're awesome. But uh, yeah, appreciate it. Um, the thing is, where both Muertes and Cuerno are in their Lucha Underground careers, that to me is a dream match, and like that to me is worthy of any Ultima Lucha main event right now where these guys are. Yeah. Uh, so obviously. I'm not going to be opposed to that. And I think about King Cuerno, best suicide dive in the business, bar none. Can you imagine a spot where he goes for that and Muertes just catches him? Like just I just, a straight right to the face. Or just a straight right try. I mean, just literally catches him, like, by the throat or something and then just doesn't it. Like, Flatliner to the outside. That. Flatliner to the outside. Like, I get goosebumps thinking about it. So, dude, like, King Cuerno... He, he's a booker's wet dream, just to put it as bluntly as possible, because I don't really think you can go wrong with him. You would have to deliberately just try, just sit in a room and be like, all right, how do we screw this guy up to screw him up? Because I just think he fits in any situation anywhere. Uh, again, you just need that motivation with with Muertes. You have all the motivation, either maybe Cuerno's eyeing Katrina for some reason, or more directly, I'm eyeing the freaking world title, <laughs> you know, so yeah, that but, totally Yeah, but I mean, you even brought up earlier about how Cuerno likes to get that psychological edge over his opponents, and yeah. maybe maybe he tries to kind of freak Mortes out with something, and it doesn't work, so he resorts to going after Katrina. Right, exactly, yeah, finding that pain point, yeah. and then just working the shit out of it, you know, that's Cuerno in a nutshell. Dude, I love the man, and I and the fact that we had a discussion like this just shows you big things are in store for him. I think the second season, his best hasn't even begun yet. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I definitely agree. All right. Well, I think this is a really well timed episode. We're at just over twenty three minutes, I believe. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, next a time we will be talking about. Wait for it. Wait for it. John, do you want to tell them or should I? You tell them. Drago. Oh my God. Um, again, playing the uh, the guessing game. See if you guys can guess who's after Drago. I know one person already got it right. So to you, shh. <laughs> but we will see you all for NXT tomorrow night. Or if you're only here for our Lucha uh, content, we will see you on Thursday for Drago.